We're going live. We are live. Hey guys, and welcome back to School You Support number eight. Wow. It's been eight weeks already. Thank you guys so much for being here. If you are tuning in, if it's your first time, welcome. If you've been here before, let me know. Hello, Madison Buckman. Welcome back. If you guys want to tell me who you are and where you're from, uh, I'll be happy to shout you out. I always like to know where people are coming from. This is a very international community of bus builders, it's turned out. So School You Support is basically an opportunity for me and us to help each other with our bus builds or van conversions or RV renovations. Um, it's sort of, it's tough to get through these big projects. I know that mine took me 18 months and uh, like a thousand hours of work. And a lot of that was actually time spent researching. And I didn't really know where to find the difficult, the answers to my difficult questions. And the first place I went was Facebook groups. And that was just, it wasn't helpful for me. And I spent a lot of time um, not getting answers to my questions that I could, uh, that I could apply to my building. And so I ended up reaching out to a couple of trusted advisors. One of them was my father-in-law, Bob. And one of them was actually another YouTuber and veteran bus builder who we're going to talk about later named Chuck Cassidy. And I would just bounce ideas off of him just every once in a while. And that was really helpful for me. And it helped me to get through this build. Um, Chuck's doing live streams. I'm doing live streams. And I really just want to be able to help you guys get through your builds. So sometimes we have a theme. Today we do have a theme. And that is that uh, the theme is gutted. We'll talk about that more in a minute. But basically, this is a Q&A, and you are welcome to ask me really any question you'd like. Um, most topics are absolutely in play. doesn't even have to be about bus building. It could be lifestyle, anything. Um, I'm really just here to help you guys get through your build and keep your spirits up as you bus convert, because a lot of us are just sort of taking this on as complete amateurs. And that was more or less me. I was basically in that position, like, man, come up, coming up on five years ago. That's wild to say. I'm also happy to talk about YouTube as well, um, because YouTube is a passion of mine. It's where you guys most likely found me, and you guys are part of my YouTube community. And so if you guys want to talk about YouTube, I'm always happy to do that. If you also want me in your back pocket at all times, you can do that through schoolysupport.com. It's my Patreon where I consult with you and help you with your build. I have three people doing that right now, and they send me text messages every couple of days. We do um, over the phone consultations, and they send me their layouts and electrical plans, and I let them know if everything's going okay or if there's any red flags. And I've been enjoying that a lot. So thank you to each of you who have joined up. So the topic of today's conversation is gutted. And oh wait, let me let me say hi real quick. Hello, Mario from Washington. Hello from Eureka Springs. Welcome, La Casa Vera. And Southern Rebel, welcome back. Southern Rebel is probably like you might be my number one OG um, from like video number one. And hello, Nancia from Northern California. Welcome, guys. So I'm gonna be on gutted of season. Sorry, I'm going to be on season two of Gutted, and I'd like to tell you guys what about Gutted and show you. This is sort of like a, you know, like a choose your own adventure, maybe a guided tour. So if you are tuning in now, I'm going to be dropping a bunch of links in the YouTube chat, in the live stream chat. I want you guys to click on those links and watch these or check out these things with me. And um, I'll give you time to do that. But if you're watching this in the future, it's very important that you check out the live chat so that you guys get access to these things that we're talking about. So gutted is, uh, it's, I, I will say that first it's, well, first it's a TV show. It's a build off between a schoolie team, a van team and an RV team. And they had their first season last year in Colorado. And uh, I wasn't able to attend because we had a baby and she was a couple months old. It was pretty bad timing. But this year I'm super pumped to be able to go to gutted and I'm actually going to be competing with the bus team, which I'm very excited about. So it's a build off. You have five days to build the bus and uh, basically whoever does the best job wins. And 
season one of Gutted, you can watch on Blank Space, Blank Space app on your TV, probably your phone, your computer. And also they now have episodes one and two, and they probably will have the rest of the episodes soon um, for free. Well, it's all free, but on YouTube. But you can watch it ad-free on Blank Space. I don't know how these guys pulled it off, but it's completely ad-free. So really excited about this bootstrap TV show, bus building project and festival. It's also a festival. It is in um, right outside of Kansas City, Missouri this year. So if you're in the area, it's October 4th through 9th. And there's going to be a break day. I'm going to have a day off on, a, on October 6th. I'll have plenty of time to hang out, say hi to whoever is there. So if you're going to be there, please let me know in the chat or email me at gilliganphantom.com. So I think that kind of covers it. I really do. I want you guys to watch this, if you would. Um, it's about it's two and a half minutes. And this is the trailer for season one. I'm popping it in the chat right now. If for some reason you can't access the chat, just YouTube gutted season one trailer. And it's about two and a half minutes. Load this up. I'll give you guys about 30 seconds to load this up. And I'm going to watch it with you. And I'll put this on so you can't hear it through my microphone. But I think this, I'm really excited about this, to be honest. And um, you're going to see a lot of familiar, familiar faces if you are watching YouTube bus conversions. Pretty much everybody on the schoolie team I knew to some extent in advance. So getting to watch them build is really cool. All right, so I'm I'm starting the video right now. It's about two minutes and thirty seconds. So go ahead and hit, go ahead and hit play on that for me. All right, so let me know. Let me know in the chat when you guys are done. And um, man, I'm just so pumped. That was a very rock and roll trailer, wasn't it? I'm so pumped about Gutted Season One, and um, I'm going to tell you guys who I'm competing with because I'm really excited about all of them. They're all actually bus building. Well, they're they're not they're not bus building YouTubers, but they're all on YouTube as well. So. First of all, we have Kelson J, who you guys probably know. Kelson J met up with us several times on the road. We were kind of like road buddies. We would help them when they broke down, which unfortunately was often. 
and we really got to know each other and we're great friends now. And Jay actually helped me with the Our, Our Wild Caravan build briefly. So Jay and Kelsey, they now have a shop. They're converting an Airstream. They've done several builds, including a couple for themselves. And uh, Jay is just a just a top notch, like speedy builder and really excited to be working along with him. And Kelsey keeps it super entertaining as well. Next up, we have Chuck Cassidy. So Chuck, I mentioned earlier, and uh, his and also Ben Jackson. Chuck and Ben. All right, so here comes Chuck Cassidy in the chat. Chuck and Ben have been building buses professionally for about a decade. I would say that they are definitely the premier schoolie building shop in the business. They do just bang up builds. They've been building in Colorado, like I said, for 10 years. Just the super pros, really excited to be building with these guys. And I'm really just hoping to learn from everybody that I'm working with and Chuck and Ben especially. Next up, we have Devin from Basically Nomads. Only just met Devin recently through the internets. Devin is, so Devin and, uh, oh no, I'm blanking. I'm blanking on his wife's name. Oh, I'm so sorry, Devin. I'm really bad with names, guys. So if you meet me, you'll probably enter, you'll probably know that. So Devin is uh, has got like a really tech edge and he's a gamer and he's got some really exciting ideas for this build. Um, which I think you're definitely going to want to see. So here's Devin in the chat. Hello, Dorian from Ohio. Welcome. And then finally, we have Regretless, Alyssa, whose YouTube name is Regretless. She has been making these incredible stories on YouTube. Her channel's been blowing up lately, and they're just totally beautiful and wonderful. I recommend you check them out. You get to see her life in the context of living in a bus and the stories that she tells and also a special shout out to jess from the painted buffalo who is actually in the van team sorry jess but you don't get to be with us on the bus team but i'm wearing your shirt right here the painted buffalo is her bus she's on bus build number two she just got an engine swap and she's definitely she's basically traveling around doing a nonprofit um veteran focused art project uh to help people to help heal pe people with PTSD. So this is a painting by her son, Liam, and I cherish his shirt and I work in it often. So we will see you there, Jess, and I'm sorry that you're on the van team and you're gonna have to lose, but it is what it is. All right, so that's all about gutted. You are welcome to ask questions about anything that you would like. And um, yeah, Q and A, whenever you are ready. Hit me with the question. All right. I saw something earlier here. La Casa Vera says, we bought our bus a year ago and wound up landing work travel. That's really exciting. But yes, that makes it hard to work on your bus. So we haven't had much time to do our build. It's given me anxiety to get through it. Just need to save the money. You know, anxiety and the need for money, like that definitely aligns with bus building. And I like to just... I like to compartmentalize the projects and just take it project by project. If you watch my build videos, I, I start, you know, I start skinning the interior and that's what I work on till it's done. And, you know, if you can just get the materials for one step, execute it, move on to the next one, build up, it will take some of the anxiety away. At least it did for me to have everything looming on you. I got to learn how to do electrical. I don't know how to do plumbing. It's very challenging, but if you can just compartmentalize the projects and um, on top of that, even if you don't have much money or much time, just get out there for two hours and do something on the bus because you're gonna figure it out eventually. All right, Melissa L says she is a PNW Pacific Northwest schoolie owner and wondered how you guys did on highway one-on-one when you were over there. Really good question. I'm going to pull up the map for myself. Hopefully it'll joggle my memory a little bit, but I remember Highway 101 very well. And we traveled the, I'm not going to say the whole coast, but we traveled most of the coast. Okay. So here's the deal. The um, Highway 101 from like all through the Olympic Peninsula is totally gravy. You just get beautiful coastal views 
really no significant inclines at all. And uh, you can't see the entire coast with Highway 101 and the Olympic Peninsula. But what is accessible was very easy. We saw pretty much all of the coast of Washington. We also saw almost all the coast of Oregon. I think we might have seen the whole thing. All of Oregon was the same deal. Very easy. And there's actually tons of pull-offs along Oregon where you can uh, pretty much just hang out uh, in your bus, spend a night, maybe even spend two nights. Probably nobody's going to bother you. Your mileage may vary. I was traveling during the pandemic. We were. So um, all, all of Oregon is easy. And there's actually great campgrounds in Washington and Oregon along the coast as well. And we went to some of those. Now, you're probably actually concerned about Northern California. And yeah, that's where it can get quite sketchy. So we traveled to, okay, what did we do? We traveled through Crescent City. Um, and then this is where you have to pretty much go inland. Highway 101, I, I hope I have this right, but between like Eureka and I'm just going to go ahead and say San Francisco. It, it was fine. Yeah, I'm sorry. Highway 101 is fine. It's Route 1. It's Route 1 that's tough. So, all right. So Route 1 is really the only place where like you might get in trouble. And that's on the coast in Northern California. But Highway 101 is really easy the whole way. So there's a couple locations where you're like, ooh, I'm going over a pretty sketchy bridge. But there's really nothing actually sketchy about it. It's totally fine. Highway 101, sorry about the long-winded answer. You're going to be fine on Highway 101. One thing I like to do is um, I like to Google Maps, obviously, my destination. And if I see a ton of switchbacks, um, that's a red flag for me. I know that I'm either, I'm probably climbing a mountain pass. That could be really bad. If I see a lot of switchbacks like that, and there's no obvious, easy route, then I'm going to start Googling that route. I'm going to say like, um, should I drive an RV from Eureka to San Francisco on Route 1? And I'll get some opinions from people and I can discern from those opinions what's going to work for me or not. Somebody might say, I pulled my fifth wheel with my Ford F-350, no problem. And somebody might say, um, my class CRV gave me trouble. If it gave somebody trouble, you know, I might, I might look for that other route because doing a constant incline is challenging for your bus and doing a constant decline is challenging for you. They're both challenging for you. So. So, yeah. Nancy, uh, did you travel route one, higher one? Or are you saying that you should avoid Highway 1 from Liggett to Fort Bragg. Liggett? Legit? Oh, don't travel it. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yes, Highway 101 is fine. Route 1, be careful. Northern California actually was, um, some of the roads in Northern California and some of the cities were like the least first world I've seen probably in America. There, I guess there is just some very challenging terrain. And they're like, we're not going to work really hard to pave this extremely sketchy road that only the locals really should drive down. That was really the only place that I encountered that in our travels. All right, Twiz, Twiz, uh, I'm, just call you, I'm gonna call you Twiz because I cannot pronounce that. I'm buying a bus this weekend and want to do, a, and he, wants, he or she wants to do a roof raise, rooftop deck and wood burning stove, which all seem to be deal breakers for insurance. Any idea what people with these amenities typically do? Do they drive around uninsured? That's a no. Just not tell the insurance company? Maybe. I'd assume a fender bender with a roof raise is enough to disqualify. I'm located in Colorado, interested in hearing your thoughts. So um, it seems, having spoken to you guys over the last few weeks, that the insurance companies are getting a little bit more stringent about wood burning stoves and rooftop decks. I have not heard that about roof raises. I would say go ahead and do your roof raise. I don't think that's a problem. Um, we generally, I haven't done a roof raise, but you know, a roof raise is really to add some ceiling height for your comfort 
and to add insulation on the floor and the ceiling for your comfort. And it's not to make your bus a soaring, um, incredible container home thing, which some people do. And uh, it's always impressive and it's fun. But And that's totally fine if you're not going to travel in it very much. But to make your bus much more top heavy and, um, you know, rock in the wind more, it's just going to be a little stressful for you driving long term. Okay, so that's just a that's a caveat. Um, I don't know. I don't know the answer. I, I feel like if I really wanted a, uh, a rooftop deck, I would make sure that it is low key. And if I really wanted a wood burning stove, which I, if I really want a wood burning stove, I'm pretty sure I'm going to put it in a bus because it's not like, it's really not that crazy. It's a very, it's a manageable thing. Uh, you know, unless you're like hacking in a residential wood stove, um, generally these little stoves that people put in, they seem very safe. And the leading cause of fires in buses is it's not mismanagement of wood stoves. So I think if I really want those things, what I'm going to do is probably try and avoid bringing it up. And I don't know if that's going to work, but when I insured my bus, it was an RV and the RV was a Gillig motorhome conversion or something like that. And uh, they didn't, you know, they didn't ask all those questions. So I'm not sure if I just had a different setup, but when your bus title says motorhome, you know, do you even say like this is this is a bus conversion with a rooftop deck and a wood stove? No, just let them ask the questions. I hope that helps. Okay, so yeah, so Kelly Newsom is our go-to insurance agent, and they say they will not cover a roof raise, a rooftop deck, and a wood burning stove. It kind of makes sense. So I don't know. Maybe maybe we need to back some of these things off. Maybe maybe pick one or two of the three. So Mark Schmidt is in Southern and South Ontario, and he's got a 40 foot 2008 Bluebird. He installed a mini split AC two weeks ago after watching my AC tutorial videos. Thanks again for that. And also he loved Gordo's bus video. Did you guys see Gordo's bus video? Let me know if you did. Gordo's bus was so cool and it's just so next level. Um, thank you so much for letting me know about that. I'm glad you got some value out of that. Uh, installing the mini split, as long as you can get somebody to do the connections for you or you can rent the tools, it's pretty easy. It's an easy job. It seems really hard, but it's easy. So Dorian bid on a 2005 Prevost and won the bid at 26 grand. It's a 45 foot, 56 foot, 56 seat bus. Was that a decent deal? Or do you need more information? Well, <clears throat> so a Prevost is absolutely worth more than a school bus. A 2005 is probably the latest model you're going to consider um, because of the engine options. 26 grand is, I, I, I would expect it to be in fantastic condition. Um, I feel like it's high, but I haven't shopped for a Prevost. And I hope I'm not saying, yeah, Prevost. Provost? Prevost, uh-oh. Um, like, I, I feel like it might be, it, I think it's expensive. And I do, th I do feel like I need to know, know more information. But a 45 foot uh, 2005 bus, like that's 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 next level. You know, that's not your average schoolie. So I'm definitely going to expect to spend 15 grand on one that's not in great condition. Yes, Gordo's bus. Wow. So I'll drop his video in the chat here. It is totally sweet and. It is totally blowing up on YouTube right now, which is always exciting for me and Gordo. But his bus conversion is- So it's been a lot of- Really remarkable. I absolutely recommend that you watch this if you haven't seen it. And it's uh, it's not a full-time home. It's like an adventure rig slash shop. It has a crane. It's got a flatbed. Well, he's turned it into a flatbed truck. The interior is just tight. And not even to mention like all the tech running through there. I didn't even get to show you all the tech in the video. I didn't want to sort of bore people who um, 
are not down for watching like 25 to 50 minutes of the bus conversion. So there's things that, that I didn't even get to show you, but yeah, check out Cordo's bus. So Mark Schmidt asks, what is your, oh, hold on to me. Okay. Yep. Yep. Okay. Good job, Mark. Yep. Mark got a little bit of help with that AC. That's great. So Mark asks, what is my full-time job? If I may ask, do you do conversions slash schooly vids as a main gig or is this a side hobby? So my, I'll give you a little bit of history. Um, I, I became a firefighter in 2013. Yeah. 2013. And I was, um, I was not making a lot of money down South here as a firefighter. And I knew that I was going to have to pursue income outside of firefighting. And so I was chasing what they call passive income. And the first way that I found it was through real estate. And I did have some help to buy my first rental property, but I bought a rental property um, actually where I'm from in Philadelphia. And I sort of slowly, we, we, my wife and I saved up and we turned our um, guest, not our guest bedroom, we turned our converted garage in this home that I'm sitting in right now, which we bought um, shortly after I became a firefighter into an Airbnb. And we took the money from that and we leveraged that into a condo, which we Airbnb. And we actually bought the bus knowing that we were going to have children and we wouldn't be able to Airbnb our home. It wouldn't feel right. And we thought maybe we could do like a backyard Airbnb, which was quite popular at the time. People were like putting tiny houses and Airstreams in their backyard. So long story short, the municipality that we're in right now shut down Airbnbs completely. Um, but the point sort of is that I was I was chasing that passive income um, through real estate investing, and it was obviously a good time uh, because the market was pretty beat down. Um, so we have some income from that, and that's sort of enough to, you know, sort that was enough to sustain. It's not it's not enough to sustain us as a family, but it's enough to make something like taking on this bus project um, feasible, like not. A crippling risk. So I understand that there's lots of people out there who are really taking much bigger risks than I did when I started. Um, but everybody's situation is different. So there's people, you know, in all kinds of situations. So long story short, I still have those rental properties. And I started YouTube because I, well, I saw these other bus builders on YouTube, and I was just really into what they were doing and the like, the build thing. I just, I just wanted to do it too, but I knew that I had to find a way to monetize it. So it was always a hope of mine that I would be able to make some kind of an income through YouTube. And, um, I, I was not able to do that really until I had a, my, our time lapse go viral. And so long story short, YouTube provides me with, well, us with a very varied income that at times is sufficient and other times is definitely not sufficient. And, uh, and then, you know, that's part of why I helped Kenny and Sam build their bus, because I was like, you know what, it's probably a good idea to have some more income. And um, I'm sort of flying by the seat of my pants a lot. This is, sorry, this is quite a, this is quite a, um, quite a segue. But I now, I now have a lot of confidence in myself. I know that my work is valuable and I am just having trouble figuring out what to do next. And I also loved being a firefighter and it was a great setup for our family. And the wages thankfully have gone up a bit. So I don't know what I'm gonna do long-term, but that's basically what I do. I, I, I juggle the passive income things that I currently have, and then I try and create more of them. And I hope that answers your question. It's a side hobby and a main gig. Um, let's see what's next. So Madison Busman has been gluing, gluing with Loctite PL3 and screwing his firming trips and wall panels. Is that overkill? Do you have anything loosening up after 20,000 plus miles? I think Loctite, I think gluing and screwing is, um, overkill. Let's talk about glue and screwing real quick. So I've learned this now. Now that I've spent five years of this, like woodworking, you when you want to join two pieces of wood, the strongest joint 
um, hypothetically, like this is not going to be the same in every scenario, is glue. And preferably there's glue with, with a joint. So with a dowel or a biscuit or Craig screws or something, two pieces joined together. But when we're nailing and gluing things, we're setting the nails so that we can hold two pieces tight so that glue can hold it together. Now, when you're screwing something, you are pulling, you're pulling these two pieces of wood together with the threads of the screw. And it's a, it's a much stronger joint than a nail. It is not as strong as screw and glue, but it's certainly adequate as compared to like just nails. Like if you were to just nail your ceiling panels up, that might not work out long term. But long story short, I do think that gluing your furring strips is overkill and you should just screw them in. So Dorian asks, is it possible to talk to you offline or email you? Yes. So if you want to talk to me um, privately at the moment, the only way to do that is through Schooly Support, which is a Patreon. And yes, it basically is one of my side hustles and one of my revenue streams. But I can be your bus building helper if you'd like me to be. You can email me really any questions that you want. I, you know, if you have one question for me via email me, it, I will definitely answer you. We, I might even... I might even answer a bunch of your questions. The thing is that if I'm going to spend a bunch of time on something, it has to, in some way, you know, feed my family. So there's a bit of a gate between like full and access, but you can ask me anything here. So you're welcome to. You're welcome, Mark. I'm glad you appreciated my answer. Melissa was super close to buying a Phantom because of my build, but the floor is super rusted. She is six feet tall. And she thinks that she'll be fine in her Thomas Freightliner short term. What do you think? Um, so, well, I guess I guess I need you to tell me about your Thomas Freightliner. Is it built out? Is it adequate? Is it too short? Is it, are you saying it's too short? Because Thomas actually makes, I think they even make a 78 inch bus. Um, the Gillig Phantom is 77 inches if it's a school bus. And if it's a transit bus, it's probably even taller. Or I think it's 78. It might be 77. So I don't quite have the answer to your question. All right, guys, if you have questions, you are welcome to ask. Oh, Dorian. Dorian wants to go through my Patreon. Thanks so much, Dorian. Schoolysupport.com. Boom. Hit me up. And um, also, like, if you want a free phone consultation, send me an email. Tell me your phone number. Let me know you want to chat. That's something I do, too, because there's, you know, you need to be able to talk to me and know that person can help me over the phone. You might decide, like, yeah, you know, maybe I'm going to look for somebody else. There's other people who do this, of course. All right. So, Melissa, I guess you are you're thinking about moving on from your Freightliner. I feel like you got a fine bus. You haven't told me anything that's wrong with your bus so far. So tell me what you don't like about it. Um, Cause a Gillig, you know, like a, is a, a Gillig is 15% better, 25% better than a Thomas Freightliner. You know, it's uh maybe it's even 50% better, but a bus that you're working on now and that you've already paid for might change that ratio. So Twiz asks, what is the absolute maximum height you would recommend for a bus? I've seen anything from 12 foot six to 13 foot six. Okay, really good question. So our bus is like 10 feet. And what that means for me is that I can drive through almost everything except for like, uh, you know, tunnels, like little bridge tunnels in, in New England. There's really no time that I'm ever gonna consider my roof height, which is a good feeling, right? Um, as soon as you go above 12 feet, you are not necessarily going to have that feeling anymore. And I do know that there are some road maximums and I don't know what they are, but I want to be like, I want to be maybe, maybe 12 feet or less. Maybe that 12 foot six inches is the max. I, I sort of want to err on the side of caution personally. So I'm going to go ahead and say 12 and a half feet is enough. Okay, so Melissa likes her bus, but she's at the point where she's installing insulation and flooring. 
Okay. So, all right. So, Melissa, I, I understand now what your problem is. You are six feet tall, and which is above average height, and you are worried about your head touching the ceiling once you put in uh, floor insulation and flooring and all that. Okay. So, tell me one last thing. Tell me what your ceiling height is right now. 76 inches, 77, 78, et cetera, because we need to know how much better I can get. So my advice to you while I wait for that ceiling height is I would just do half inch insulation, or if you're really concerned about it, and it really depends what you're going to be doing, but you know, I really think you do want a layer of rigid foam to create a thermal break between the metal floor pan and your interior space. So go ahead and do half inch foamular um, or Owens Corning, XPS, 15 PSI, or 25 PSI if you can find it, foam board. And then I would do a 5 8 CDX, or let's see if this Advantech subfloor is... Perfect. What's going on? 23 and 2332. That's basically three quarter. So when I was doing Gilligan Phantom, I was I was concerned about bus height as well. I'm five foot ten, so I'm kind of average height. But um, half inch insulation, five eight CDX. Now you are at you lost an inch in one eight. Okay. Now fur out your ceiling with a three quarter inch furring strip, and you have lost one inch and seven eighths. Yep, one inch and seven eighths. Quarter inch um, ceiling panel, and now you've lost two and an eighth. So can you afford to lose two and an eighth? If you can't, maybe you should do furring strips that are half inch thick. And uh, that would be ripping half inch plywood. So uh, it's a consideration. So Melissa, okay, so if you're if your ceiling height is six foot two, it doesn't get any taller than that. If, um, yeah, that's, oh, that's, is that 74 inches? Oh, shoot, it does get a little bit taller. Six foot is 72 inches plus two is 74 inches. So yes, you can get to 77. You can get three more inches. I, I, I do think if, if you, if you feel like you have an exit strategy on this bus and you can acquire a new bus, I do think that those three inches will be meaningful for you because if you're living this thing for a long time and you're six foot and you're going to lose two inches, you're going to be brushing the ceiling. People do it. Absolutely. A lot of people do it. So a lot of people do it. I don't know. It's, it's going to depend on your exit strategy, but to answer your question, you can get a 77 inch bus. You can get three more inches in height. All right, let's see if I missed any questions. Thanks, Melissa, for your questions. Sorry that your bus is a little bit shorter than you'd like it to be. You can also slouch. I do a lot of slouching. Um, I actually thought that I was going to hit the, I, I thought when we were done that I was going to, the bus is going to feel closed in because when you have the bare metal ribs, it just like, it seems okay seems like you have tons of space. And when you start to close it in, it starts to feel like it's closing in on you. But in the end, I felt really comfortable. And I think, yeah, like I basically described what we did. So we lost about two and one eighths inch, two inches and one eighth. And it felt pretty good. It feels fine. I'd never regretted the roof raise. The real reason for the roof raise besides the ceiling height is to get a, is to build a bus that is suitable in more climates. So, yep. Guys, feel free to ask questions. I'm, I'm going to be right back. I'll be right back, I swear. Okay. Obi Bon says, how is your business going? We owe you. <laughs> um, everything's good. I got, a vi I got a video going viral right now. That is so exciting. So, so exciting. My first viral video was my first time lapse. And uh, let, me, let me bring it back. Um, let, me bring, let me bring it back 
uh, to like the early days. So I was building this bus, right? I was making YouTube videos. I would like, as soon as, as soon as I could at the firehouse, like retreat, get my laptop out and work on the videos. I would edit them with iMovie and I would edit from like about 8 30 PM till like maybe 11 30. So I would get about three hours of editing in. And it took me about a week to a little bit more than a week to make a video. And I was editing on iMovie and I had really low budget gear and I had a, um, I had a community of under 5,000 people. And when I, well, so the other thing is we lost our comments. It was just a luck of the draw thing. YouTube took away comments from videos that had children in them. They took them away from our whole channel. And so for like more than a year, I had no way to speak with my community, to talk with you guys. And so I was like, uh, what am I going to do? You know, I don't, I haven't figured out YouTube. I don't know how to even talk to anybody. I don't know if people are appreciating this or not. And I, I saw some other YouTubers had success with tour videos. And now I understand why and time-lapse videos. And I was like, you know what? I'm not done with this bus, but let's just make the tour and let's just make the time-lapse. And let's see if I can pull this off. Let's see if this is going to work out at all. And we made the tour and it was mildly successful. It was a lot better than usual. So I was like, oh, okay, that's nice. And then we made the time-lapse and man, <laughs> the time-lapse, I edited that thing on iMovie. The bus wasn't even done. And um, in retrospect, the music really annoys me. And that thing just went just bananas. It did like 2 million views in no time. And that brought 50,000 new subscribers, which was complicated for me because now I had 5,000 subscribers that I, I sort of knew what they wanted. Now I really don't know what 50,000 more want to watch. And so here I am making these bus building videos. And really what I, what I think would be enjoyable is another time-lapse. Well, long story short, it was amazing to go viral. Um, it took me a long time to learn the lessons that I learned from those videos because I didn't have any way to interact. And it's also taken me a long time to uh, do something like this with you guys because I just focused on other things when the comments were gone. And um, it was not much more than a year ago that we got comments back. Hello, Javier, welcome back. So Journey with Maggie, um, thought that I shut comments down because I had too many comments. No, I didn't. And um, and I, I love the comments, um, like good or bad. <laughs> Full disclosure, if I just if I get a comment that is just insulting, I just delete it, and it it doesn't um, it doesn't have any effect on me. And um, if I get something that's like encouraging, I you know I'll write back or I'll, I'll heart it. Having comments was was awesome, and I was so lost when we lost comments. I really didn't know what to do, and I'm really glad that I stuck it out and basically decided I would figure this out without comments, and eventually YouTube gave them back. So do you guys have any questions? Because I'm spilling all my deep, deep secrets over here about YouTube and income. There's not really secrets. It's just things that we don't usually talk about. So Obi-Wan mentions, we owe you, which I, um, I understand if you feel that way, because I did make a lot of videos and the point of the videos, you know, while there were elements of it for me, it was, um, my angle definitely became helping others. And obviously like, I get a lot from that. So you really don't owe me. Um, but I do think I'm going to create a Patreon tier where it's just, you're just supporting my work. Like maybe it'll be $5 and that will be at schoolysupport.com. And I just don't know. I just don't know quite if I want to do that or how I want to do that, but yeah, I might do that. Okay. Dorian says I should. Thank you, Dorian. Okay. Obi-Wan says yes, please. All right. Well, that that's going to come up. I, I'll probably work on that maybe even tomorrow. Um, and I'll see what kind of perks. Oh, I made a huge impact on all of you guys. Thank you. Thank you so much. I, I mean, that's, that's like, that's enough for me. And you know, the, I honestly, like, I've never considered a Patreon because we've been, uh, so a big part of the reason that we were in a totally fine fa financial position was renting this house out because we live in just a really incredible rental market. 
and we got this house just at a great time. But now that we're back here, um, we don't have that income. So like things got trickier for a minute, but, but we were totally fine. And thank you guys so much for your support. I really appreciate you. And I will make the Patreon. I just feel reluctant, but I'll make it. Thanks for encouraging me. So Yvonne used to work for Patreon. Yeah. I mean, Patreon's a really, really beautiful thing. And I've seen a lot of people really um, create like a, a safety cushion for themselves with it. And um, and actually like the, the, the one thing I really, the, the one thing I really, really desperately need is I need to hire an editor because I am so slow and I, I just don't, I just can't edit like I used to on iMovie uh, because for me now the stakes are so high. I, I care so much about the videos and um, whether or not they're successful because now that I'm sort of like a sort of successful YouTuber, I feel like my trajectory should go up, you know, like that would be ideal. So it just takes me too long. So being honestly being able to know that like every time I post a video, like there's a bit of money that I can always be able to send to an editor, even if it's just editing like half the video, like that would just be great. All right, give me one second, guys. Be right back. Hi right, guys, so I got to bounce early tonight. I don't know if you heard River screaming, but she's just having a lot of trouble, trouble falling asleep. So I got to bounce today. Parting thought is I'm going to make a Patreon tier for you guys to just support me. Thank you guys so much for just being so kind, being here for me. And um, please check out Gutted. Please check out that show. You're going to love it. Blank space on your TV or go to guttedevent.com. Just watch it. I think it's going to be fun for you. Love you guys. Have a great night. See you soon.